Hi there, how are you doing? I want to go through with you a full mock exam paper so that you can see question by question how we will tackle each one. Now I'm going to do each question first of all without a calculator and then with a calculator just so that you can deepen your understandings. So diving straight in, question one. The doctor prescribes 50 milligrams of a drug in 120 milliliters to be given intravenously over 100 minutes. How many millilitres per hour should the pump be set at? Now, the clue here is that word pump. It tells us that it's an infusion. And we have a formula we can use to help us unpack the question for an infusion. And that is that rate equals volume over time. Now, the volume they have given us is 120 millilitres. And the time they have given us is 100 minutes. Now they've been a bit mean in this question because this value here, the 50 milligrams, simply wasn't used. It was a red herring. So at least using the formula has allowed us to avoid that trip wire and only pick out the values we want. Now we do have a problem before we can proceed. At the moment you can see that the units that we have are millilitres and minutes. But we want milliliters per hour. The question clearly says that we must give our answer as milliliters per hour. Now to simply convert between milliliters per minute into milliliters per hour we're going to have to times our formula by 60. In other words mathematically we are going to carry out 120 over 100 times 60. Now back in year one, you did a question on a fraction times a fraction. So I'm going to turn that into 60 over one, just so that we don't multiply the wrong values. Let's simplify that first fraction. 120 over 100 can be divided through by 10. In other words, I can cancel out the zeros. And the remaining 12 over 10, well that's still two even numbers. So halving top and bottom, halving 12 and 10 becomes six over five, and then we mustn't forget to multiply by 60 over 1. Now to multiply those two fractions, it's simply top times top, bottom times bottom. We're well, multiplying the top, 6 times 60. Well, 6 times 6 is just 36. And then add a 0 on. And 5 times 1 is just 5. Our final step is where we, I always imagine in my mind's eye, pushing over that fraction. Because to work out 360 over 5, I'll simply work out 5 into 360. Well 5 into 3 doesn't go and 5 into 36 goes 7 remainder 1 and then 5 into 10 is 2. So our answer has come out to be a nice whole number that may not always be the case but our final answer is 72 keeping on my units millilitres per hour. The whole point of that times by 60 was to convert into the correct units. Now that felt like a lot of work, but let's check with a calculator. And with a calculator, we are just going to do with the 120 over 100. We must multiply by the 60 over 1 as well. So we'll turn it on and clear the memory. So we're going to work out 120 divided by 100 multiplied by 60 divided by 1. And as you can see, my answer is indeed 72 millilitres per hour. But it's very important that you realise with the calculator, it wasn't the original formula I was putting in, but this adjusted formula. That's the important part. Excellent. Let's do another question. Question two. A patient is prescribed 0.55 grams of a drug three times in a day. How many milligrams of this drug will the patient receive in a day? This is a two-part question and the first thing I want you to realise is that word times which I've underlined. One of my steps will be to multiply by, well what am I times in by? Clearly by this value, the 3. But then there'll be a second step because they want my answer in milligrams whereas currently I've got my units given in the question in grams. So there'll be a part B where I have to convert grams to milligrams. 
Now it does not matter which order I do these two steps and because I have an awkward number 0.55 I'd rather do the conversion before I do the multiplying. So let's do that. Let's remind ourselves how the conversion works. Go from grams to milligrams, that's going down these stairs and therefore I'll be moving my decimal three places to the right. So I start with 0 0.55 grams and I'm moving that decimal one, two, three places to the right. You can see I've jumped outside the number and there is one empty loop, so there's room for one, zero. And I hope you can see that as an outcome for step one, I have 550 milligrams. So my units are now taken care of, so let's now do the times by three. Well, I could do 550 times three, or I could just write down 550 three times. It amounts to the same thing. I'll do that because it just feels a little easier for me. So 0 plus 0 plus 0, 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15, 5 down carry 1. And again I've got three fives in a row which is 15 and 1 is 16. So my final answer is 1650, and let's not forget milligrams. It's very important in the examination paper to always ensure you've got the units written in the answer box. If you forget the units, you will lose the mark. And this is true for all questions. Let's check with the calculator. Clear the memory. So I did the conversion first, which was 0 0.55. Now moving the decimal three places to the right, going down the stairs was the same as timesing by 1000. And you can see it really does become 550. And then I multiply that 550 by 3 to show enough get 1650. And just to convince you that the order in which I did those steps did not matter, I could start with 0 0.55, multiply by the 3 first, which gives me 1.65, and then multiply by 1000. And show sure enough, I still get the answer 1650 milligrams. Excellent. Let's do another question. Question 3. The doctor prescribes a patient 2.4 milligrams of a drug. The medication ampule contains 3.2 milligrams in 3 milliliters. How many milliliters of medication should be drawn up to deliver this prescribed dose? Now this is a classic liquid dose question and the formula you might have seen often goes something like this. What you want over what you've got times what it's in. Now what you want means what you want to give the patient and what you've got means what have you got in stock and what it's in means what is the volume. So what I tend to do when I'm unpacking the question is actually to think of it as the patient comes first. So in this case my formula would be patient over stock times volume. Let's use that version of the formula to unpack my question. Now the patient number is 2.2 four milligrams. What have I got in stock? Well in stock my stock weight is 3.2 milligrams and what is it in? Well my volume is 3 milliliters. So I've made a start, I've unpacked the question using the formula. The next thing I always do is I look at the fraction part of this unpacked formula and I check to see if the units are the same. In this case they are the same and so I can proceed. Typically in the year three paper, the units may not be the same and you would have to convert one in order to make them the same. So mathematically, what I'm being asked to do is 2.4 over 3.2 times three. This will be easy with a calculator. Without a calculator, it looks a little tricky because I'm not sure how I can simplify that fraction as the fraction does not have whole numbers. But I can take care of that. Just to simplify a fraction is where you divide top and bottom by a, a single value, I can write out an equivalent fraction by multiplying top and bottom by a single value. I want to move this decimal just one place to the right and I can do that top and bottom. In effect what I'm doing here is multiplying top and bottom by 10. It does not change the value of the fraction. So this becomes 24 over 32 times 3. Now that fraction can simplify, I can half top and bottom to get 12 over 16. 
and as luck would have it, I can keep simplifying. 12 and 16 are both even numbers, I can halve them, that becomes 6 over 8, halve it one more time, 3 over 4. On each occasion I'm not forgetting to write the times 3. Just as I did in question 1, as I have a fraction times a number, I'm going to put that number over 1, it doesn't change the meaning, it just simply stops me from making a mistake. And now to multiply two fractions, it's top times top, which is 9, bottom times bottom, which is 4. Now that is not a nice easy answer, so to work out the value of that fraction, I imagine just knocking it over, so I have 4 into 9, I can just fit it in down here. 4 into 9 is 2, remainder 1. The remainder always goes below the line. As I have a remainder by itself, I must now go a decimal, so I put a dot, top and bottom, and add a naught below the line. I can now say 4 into 10, well that's 2, remainder 2. I have another remainder by itself, so I simply add another naught. 4 into 20 is 5. So my final answer is 2.25 millilitres. Don't forget units. Let's check all this with a calculator. Clear the memory. I don't need to worry about changing that 2.4 over 3.2. My units in the fraction were the same, so I can directly put in 2.4 divided by 3.2 times 3. And that comes out to be 2.25, confirming our handworking. Excellent. On to question 4. Estimated urine output is calculated as 0.5 millilitres to 1 millilitre per kilogram body weight per hour. If a patient weighs 68 kilograms, what would their minimum expected urine output be in millilitres per hour? So the units that we're going to write our answer in are mils per hour. And the formula is very straightforward. For any weight dependent question, as this is, we simply multiply by the weight. So we know that we're going to be multiplying something by 68. And we have a choice of two values, the 0.5 and the 1. But the key word I'm going to look out for is this one here. It said, what is the minimum expected urine output? Well, the minimum of this range, 0.5 and 1, is clearly the 0.5. So I'm going to be doing 0.5 times 68. This is nothing to fear. Think back to year one, to multiply a decimal by a number, you ignore the decimal and then put it back in at the end. So I will work out 68 times 5, so I've ignored that decimal, well 8 times 5 is 40, not down carry 4, and 6 times 5 is 30, add the 4, is 34. So 0 0.5 times 68 is... 3, 4, 0, where will the decimal go? It goes here, because we have to match the number of decimal places that they were all together in the question. There was only one altogether, so there's only one here. Let's not fall down on the units. My final answer is 34.0, or I'm just going to write it as 34 millilitres per hour. Now, you may have spotted, in actual fact, 0.5 times 68 was the same as half 68 and we could have done it instantly in our head. So in this particular case we just halved the weight. But I wanted to go through this a little more formally because we don't know if you'll ever come across a question that will have a different value that you have to multiply by. So I'm merely arming you with the knowledge, the understanding to do any weight dependent question. Now of course if instead of saying the word minimum they'd said the word maximum then instead I'd be multiplying by this value 1 and then in that case the answer would just be the same value as the weight. But as a final check let's look at our calculator, clear my memory, I've decided from the question it's 0.5 times 68 and sure enough my answer is indeed 34. Question 5. Insensible loss is estimated as 12 millilitres per kilogram body weight per 24 hour period. If the patient weighs 87 kilograms, 
calculate their expected insensible loss in millilitres per 24 hour period. Now those units look a little bit complicated there for our answer but that's okay we're not going to have any problems with the calculation because this is simply another weight dependent question because of that phrase there per kilogram body weight and just like question four as it's a weight dependent question we'll simply be having to multiply something by the weight and the only question is what are we going to be multiplying that 87 by now there are two numbers you can see in the question this is the 12 which is the 12 millilitres per kilogram body weight and then there's the 24 which is the 24 hour period now just thinking about it we realize that that second number just means per day so we can ignore that the number we're wanting to multiply the weight by is the 12 so we need to work out 12 times 87 and this then becomes exactly like question four and in fact in this occasion there are no difficult decimals to deal with now for 12 times 87 I'm going to write the bigger number on top just because I prefer it that way it doesn't make a difference in terms of the answer or in terms of how much working out there is to do and first of all I'll be doing 7 times 2 and 8 times 2 so I'll ignore that one so let's work that one through. 7 times 2 is 14, 4 down, carry 1. 8 times 2 is 16 and the 1 is 17. And I finished with that carry, so I'm just going to rub it out. We're now multiplying 87 by the 1. And because the 1 is in the tens column, this is why we have to put a 0 there to begin with. And then it's 7 times 1 is 7. 8 times 1 is 8. And finally, we add the two together. 4 plus 0 is 4, 7 plus 7 is 14, 4 down, carry 1, and 1 plus 8 is 9 plus the 1 that we carried is 10. So our answer equals 1044, 1044, and let's deal with these units, millilitres per 24 hour period. And you can see the conventional way of writing down those units it is important that we get those units right and fully if i had written down for example millilitres per hour that would not be a correct answer so always take care to look at the units that are expressed in the question and nearly always as we've been seeing throughout these units when expressing the question are very often given in boldface and they were here as well so that is one area that you could always check so one final check with the calculator, clear the memory, we simply had to work out 12 times 87 and sure enough the answer is 1044, 1044. Excellent. Well that's half the paper done, so I'm going to finish here so that the next video will take care of the second half of the paper. Thanks for watching.